Hey, welcome back to Calculus. In this first day of section 9.2, I want to tell you about a way you can analyze solutions to differential equations qualitatively. So by that, I mean you can try to understand how the solution behaves without really having a formula for it using a tool called the direction field. So that's what I want to tell you about. Direction fields are for special kinds of differential equations, first order differential equations, where the derivative depends only on x and y. And they're best plotted with some software. So I want to show you a couple of options that you have to use some free software on the web to plot these things. But we'll focus our attention on kind of how to analyze the uh, pictures that we're looking at. OK. So to motivate the whole topic here, this thing has the, the form y prime is equal to f of x, y. f of x, y is x plus y. Suppose I wanted to solve the initial value problem. y prime is x plus y, subject to the initial condition uh, y of 0 is equal to 1. OK, so I'm calling that an initial value problem because it consists of a differential equation. It's my y prime equals x plus y. It consists, uh, 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 in addition to that differential equation, it has an initial condition. I want the solution to pass through the point 0, 1 in the plane. All right, and, and I can't solve that uh, differential equation by integrating because it uh, has uh, the output variable on the right-hand side. So I have no formula for the solution to it, but still I want to analyze the solution. I want to kind of talk about features of its graph. So how this, this is kind of an interesting question. How can I possibly graph a function when I have no expression for it? Okay, well, that's exactly what a direction field does. A direction field lets you look at maybe not exactly the graph of a function, but it lets you look at how the graph of that function would behave. Okay, so here's the idea. For every x, y in the plane, I'm going to compute the slope with my differential equation. I think of y prime as a slope. So at each point x, y in the plane, I'm going to draw a small line segment that has that slope, y prime. Okay, so if we draw enough of them, we'll see a bunch of these little tangent segments, and those tangent segments have to be tangent to the curves that we're looking at. So if we drew enough tangent segments, it'll sort of show us what the shape of the curve is. We'll get to see the shape of our solution. Okay, that's a little bit abstract. Let's just take a look at a picture. Here I have a computer generated picture. I, I, I generated this with some software called Mathematica. And what you're looking at is a direction field for the differential equation y prime is equal to x plus y. So what did Mathematica do here? It selected several thousand points in the plane. Here I'm just gonna pick, say, say one of them. Like if I pick the point uh, zero, one, well, then the slope there would be, well, x is 0 and y is 1, so 0 plus 1 is 1. So at that point 0, 1, which I've highlighted with that little red dot there, Mathematica draws a little line segment with slope 1. Okay, and then it's done that for several thousand points in the plane. So each one of those line segments has a slope, and that slope is the sum of the x and y coordinates. So you can kind of analyze this a little bit. It makes sense that up here in the first quadrant, those slopes are all positive. Well, because if x is positive and y is positive, then well, yeah, x plus y is positive. You can kind of see, it's hard to see in the picture here actually, but if you kind of focus your attention along the line y equals negative x, I'll move the laser pointer here in a second, but if y is equal to negative x, well then x plus y is x plus negative x, that's zero. So if you notice along that line, all those tangent slopes are flat. They're all zero there. Okay, so that's what you're looking at a picture of. You're looking at a picture of those tangent slopes. And remember, our initial condition was that y of zero is equal to one, pardon me, y of zero is equal to one was our initial condition. So that's what that red dot is, okay? So if I wanted to imagine, well, what is the solution? I won't be able to get a formula for it, but if, I wanted a f but if I wanted just a graph of that solution, what I can do is starting at that point, I'll do this in laser pointer first, and then I'll draw it in with pen. Starting at this point, I just kind of imagine what the curve would look like if it had those tangent slopes. So you see the tangent slopes kind of tell me what the shape of the curve has to look like. Yeah, so I'm drawing that in my laser pointer. Let me see if I can try to draw it in my pen. I'm going to start from the left because it's easier for me to do that. So I'm just sort of following the tangent slopes. At each point in the plane, they're telling me which way to go. 
So what are we looking at here? We're looking at a picture of the solution to our initial value problem. I don't have a formula for it, but I can kind of tell you some information about that solution just looking at this picture. Like for example, the function, the solution looks like it decreased for a while and then started increasing. It's gonna stay increasing. The solution looks like it's concave up and so on. All right, so that's kind of how you can use a direction field to get a qualitative picture of a solution of a differential equation. And you can kind of see uh, uh, by choosing different points in the plane, if you had a different initial condition, let me, let me draw one actually down here. If I picked my initial condition, say, uh, right here, well, then I'm gonna get kind of a different behavior of the solution. Yeah, it's also gonna increase. But this one uh, uh, looks like it would kind of approach something while well, the red one would too. Yeah, so depending on where you pick your initial condition, you get a different solution. But this direction field kind of tells me how that solution is gonna behave once you choose your initial condition. Okay, let me scroll down a little bit here. This is a computer generated plot of this uh, solution. The next lecture, 9.3, sorry, 9.2 part two, I'm gonna show you how to get some kind of numbers involved in this. So describing these solutions other than just in graphs, but here I'm just doing it in graphs, all right? So, so that's looking at a picture of it. And you might think like, well, how did you generate that picture? Well, I, I phoned up a friend who knows a lot about differential equations. And they told me that the general solution to this differential equation is given by that. Okay, I'm not solving it here, but that's a given. So, so that thing is the general solution to this differential equation. Let me remind you that the differential equation was y prime is x plus y. So its general solution is given by that formula. And what I'd like to do is just an algebraic exercise with you guys. Let's find the value of c that satisfies our initial condition. So this is kind of like what we were doing in section 9.1, but it's important, so I want to I want to uh, remind you. So what does that y of zero equal one means? It means that in my general solution, I should replace the y coordinate with a one, and everywhere I see an x, I replace the x coordinate with a zero, okay? So there I've done that. Everywhere I see a y, uh, I'm putting in one. There's just one spot. Everywhere I see an x, I'm putting in a zero. There were two places to put the x. And then that equation will determine c. 1 is equal to negative 1 plus c times 1. e to the 0 is 1. So 2 is equal to c. So my particular solution that I've plotted, this is how I drew that red curve in my software, it's minus x minus 1 plus 2 times e to the x. Okay, and you can stop the video if you like and go to Desmos or something like that. Plot that function and it'll have that red shape. That's our solution to the IVP. Okay. Uh, er, earlier I was talking about uh, uh, you could just see different solutions by picking different points. Here I want to do that uh, uh, algebraically as well. So this time I'm choosing an initial condition y of zero is equal to one, or excuse me, negative one. So I'm, I'm, I'm starting my curve right there and I've drawn the solution in there with a computer. Let's take this general solution and see if we can't determine what the value of c is. So we're gonna replace y with negative one and replace x with zero again. Okay, so this time our equation becomes negative one is negative one plus c. So that means that c is zero. So this solution ends up looking like y is equal to negative x minus one. And that looks right, it looks like a line, right? So if I chose my initial condition right there, the solution to this differential equation turns out to be linear. It behaves very differently than the solution that goes through the point zero, one, which we plotted above, All right? So what's the moral of my story? The behavior of the solution to a differential equation depends on an initial condition. Right, so the general solution is a family of functions. In this case, it's a first order differential equation. So that family of functions is parameterized by a single value C. Uh, uh, and when you choose an initial condition, choose an initial condition like y of zero is minus one or y of zero is one or wherever you like, basically choosing initial condition means you pick a point in the plane. And then, well, once you choose that initial condition, 
there's one and only one curve that's going to satisfy your differential equation through that point. And this is the algebra confirming that, yeah? As soon as I decide what y is when x is a certain value, it determines c. Cool. There's lots of software for pl plotting direction fields. Uh, I'm not going to try to write URLs here. I'm just going to put links to this in the YouTube video description. Okay, so, so I'll put these. One of these pieces of software you're very familiar with, Desmos, although it's not just sort of vanilla Desmos, unless you want to program it yourself. It's Desmos that has kind of a special setup. So follow the link in the video description if you want to get there. And then I also want to show you something called GeoGebra. Okay, I'm not a big fan of introducing tons of software in a course. I've been trying to use Desmos only because we all know how to use that. But GeoGebra is worth bringing into this conversation because in addition to plotting the direction field, GeoGebra can also plot some of those solutions we were just doing by hand. It's not going to give you formulas for the solutions, but it can plot them. Okay, so let me switch over and just sort of show you what these interfaces look like for this differential equation that we've been talking about together right now. So I think I'm going to start with Desmos. So give me just one second while I try to find my Desmos window on my computer. And I think you can see it now. And again, you can kind of tell this is not vanilla Desmos. This stuff will all come prepackaged. And what you'll change is right here. So, so it's calling the function g of x, y. So you can see in the top line here, g of x, y is dy, dx. So I was calling it f of x, y. But it's the same example. So, so the slope is x plus y. So we're looking at that direction field. Okay, so Desmos just plots at each point x, y, well, it's done it for several points, uh, 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 what the slope is. So this is a nice way without doing it by hand of getting a quick picture of what the direction field looks like, okay? You can move this point around, you can put it at your initial condition, but it won't draw the solution curve. So if I put this point down here at minus one, I can see that the slope there is minus one. If I put the point over here at say negative four comma zero, I can see the slope is steep, but it doesn't draw the curve. Okay, but you can edit this, like when you're doing your homework, just go to this thing, like may, may, maybe your direction field is, I don't know, x squared plus y. Um, takes a second to do the recomputation, but there you go. There's the direction field for x squared plus y. You see that it kind of changed those, those vectors near the center anyway. Uh, let's just play around with it a little bit. Uh, I'm doing this on the fly. I hope it's not gonna go wrong, but how, oh, oh, now it's in capitals. I didn't mean to do that. So how about, uh, I don't know, x uh, over y. Make that your g of x. Okay, so that's that direction field. And looking at it, if I dropped this point somewhere, going back to the concept I was telling you, can you kind of uh, visualize the slope? Visualize what the slope of those uh, solution curves would look like? Right? So I kind of like direction fields because if you draw enough of these line segments, again, they just sort of tell you. Just imagine you're like looking at like a tangent field for this uh, uh, curve. Once you pick the point you want it to go through, the tangent field tells you what the curve is. Nice. Okay. Let me um, try to switch over. I'm not sure uh, if this is going to work. I want to show you GeoGebra. So I think you can still see my window. I hope you can, otherwise I'm talking to myself. So this is the GeoGebra interface. Uh, you gotta kind of get used to it. The author gives you some nice directions down here. You can check those out on your own, but it's the same kind of idea. It wants the differential equation up here. You can see I've got my X plus Y. You can play around a little bit with what the uh, X and Y mins and maxes are. So what kind of window you're looking at. The author explains this below, but the density is sort of how many lines do you want it to draw? So higher density gives you, it's basically picking more points, picking more points. You can also control how long the segments are. So you can kind of customize these pictures to look the way you want. And then the author is very nice. He has it arranged so it writes the differential equation kind of more like you'd see it on a piece of paper. So here dy dx is how I'm writing y prime. All right, but here's the super cool thing about GeoGebra. He's got three or four, sorry, built-in solutions down here. If I turn one on, solution A is going through the point zero one. So whoosh, there you can see that solution. 
you can move that point around. If you wanted to drag that point down to say zero minus one, there's the other one I drew. I really like this. You can have more than one at a time. So if I turn on solution B and move its point down here, so I'd like you to play around with these just to get a feeling for like, oh, well, what if my initial condition is up here? How does the solution behave? What if my initial condition is in the third quadrant? How does the solution behave? You can see there's this kind of interesting set of solutions. If you put any point on that line, the solution becomes that line. Initial conditions that are above it kind of bend up in a way. Initial conditions that are below it bend down in a way. So everywhere here, I'm just playing. I know I'm talking fast, but what I'm doing, if you want some language to describe, what I'm doing is I'm qualitatively analyzing different solutions to this uh, differential equation. These are four members of an infinite family of solutions. And when I say I'm qualitatively analyzing them, it means I'm not crunching numbers. I'm not doing it quantitatively. I'm just trying to get an idea of how these solutions behave. Okay, so I hope you're gonna use these tools when you start playing around with these things. In particular, I hope you're gonna use them to plot the vector fields that I'm asking you to think about in your homework. Okay, let's switch back to the whiteboard here. It's gonna be just a temporary delay while I try to wake my iPad back up. Shouldn't be too long here. And we're back. Okay, so as a second example, I'd like to just continue kind of analyzing these things. We'll look at subdirection fields, but I'm switching the differential equation. This is a particularly interesting one to me. So this differential equation has the form y prime is equal to y times the uh, quantity one minus y over 80. I'm gonna impose the condition that y is greater than zero. It has a name, it's called the logistic equation and it's used in population modeling. used for population modeling. We're gonna solve this differential equation when we get into section 9.3, but here my purpose is just to show you that you can kind of analyze solutions to it without actually finding those solutions analytically. All right, so what do I mean by that? Well, here I have a couple of very specific questions. Like I wanna know when are the solutions to that equation increasing and when are they decreasing? And again, you might be kind of startled thinking like, well, how am I supposed to know what the solutions to that equation are doing when I don't have them? I haven't solved the logistic equation. I don't have the solution. So how could I possibly say when it's increasing and decreasing? Well, we can use a little differential calculus, right? I'm gonna make what uh, uh, in my math 109 classes, I call a sine diagram for the first derivative because uh, a function is increasing and decreasing. That's dictated by when its first derivative is positive and negative. We were told that Y has to be greater than or equal to zero. So I'm gonna label that on the far left of my diagram. And then I can see that another number that makes the derivative zero is y equals 80. Can you guys see that? Why do I know y equals 80 makes the derivative zero? Well, 80 over 80 is one, and one minus one is zero. Those are the only two numbers that make that derivative zero. So I'm gonna put little zeros above those critical values indicating that the derivative is zero there. And now I'm just gonna check the signs. If you take a number between zero and 80, well, if that number is less than 80, then y over 80 is less than one. So one minus it is positive, yeah? So, so the first derivative would be positive for numbers between uh, uh, zero and 80. But as soon as y gets bigger than 80, y over 80, the fraction term is gonna be bigger than one. You subtract it from one and you're gonna get a negative number. Okay, so this tells me the answer to my questions. When is this function uh, uh, increasing? It's increasing. The solutions are increasing uh, when y is between zero and 80. Uh, they're decreasing when y is bigger than 80. If y is equal to zero or 80, then the derivative is zero. Yeah, we already said that. Y prime is zero <clears throat> if y is zero or 80. So if y prime is zero, it means that the function's not changing. Y is a constant. Let's look at that in a picture. 
So here I've got a Mathematica drawn direction field. You can go back to Desmos or uh, GeoGebra. You'll have to play around with the window size and everything. I'm not saying it's going to work right out of the box, but I think if you tweak around with it, you could get a picture that kind of looks like this. So here's my direction field for this differential equation. Same differential equation, the logistic equation. We said that solutions are increasing for y between 0 and 80. I can see that in the picture. If you take an initial condition for any y value between 0 and 80, look, the solutions increase. Yeah, They bend towards this line if you follow the tangent lines, but they increase. Anything down there would do that. Okay. Uh, if you take a y bigger than 80, we said the solutions decrease. I can see that in the picture as well. Take a y value bigger than 80, and those tangent lines say these solutions are going to drop to that. If y is equal to 0 or y is equal to 80, either one of those equilibrium solutions, uh, or I'm calling them those equilibrium solutions. Sorry, why am I calling them equilibrium solutions? Well, because if y ever hit that value, it would stay there. The tangent lines are flat there. So if I drew in, I, I picked this one initial condition here. Uh, the initial condition is y of 0 is 25. 25 is less than 80. So this solution, I'm just trying to follow the tangent lines. It's not something quantitative or precise. It's qualitative. That's what that solution would look like. If I chose an initial condition that was bigger than 80, like up here near 100, well, then that solution is going to fall. Yeah, In population biology, people would say that this equilibrium at 80 is an attractor. All the solutions want to move towards it. No matter how small you start this, uh, this function, these solutions want to move towards that value 80. Okay, the only way you would get the equilibrium solution of zero is if you started at zero. So sometimes people call that a repelling equilibrium. This is a, a logistic model is used in population dynamics. In fact, some of you biologists are probably looking at this going, I've seen this before. You, you have a, a name for this solution, this equilibrium 80. It's called the carrying capacity of the population if it's modeled logistically. Uh, there's also a name for the, the equilibrium down here at zero. It's called extinction. So if the population ever hits zero, it stays zero. But, but according to this model, if the population has any positive value, it's going to grow away, but it won't just keep growing indefinitely. Well, it will grow indefinitely, but it grows slower and slower, approaching 80. Cool. So notice how much information I understand about the solutions to this differential equation, and I have not solved it. So that's the whole point of direction fields. Stop the video and think about that for a second. I can tell you a ton about how the solutions to this differential equations behave, and I have not solved the differential equation. That's the power of direction fields. That's what I mean by quantitative, or excuse me, qualitative reasoning. Analyzing a solution without analytically finding it. Okay, just for some more algebra practice, I will tell you, uh, here I've drawn a graph of the solution that I, that I drew by hand, y is, the initial value problem, y of 0 is 25. I'm going to tell you, it's a given, in, in, in section 9.3 you'll be able to determine this yourself, but I'm going to tell you that the solution to that logistic equation is 80 over 1 minus a constant times e to the negative x. So that's the family of solutions. And I just want to go through the algebra to determine the value of c. So that, that'll, that'll tell you how I plotted that thing. Okay? How did I find the number c that satisfies y of 0 is 25? So one more time, let's run through it. What I'm going to do is take my differential, my, my solution, my general solution. And everywhere I see a y, I'm going to put a 25. And everywhere I see an x, I'm going to put a 0. Okay? So my equation becomes 25 is 80 divided by 1 minus this constant times e to the 0, OK? So that means that 25 is 80 over 1 minus this constant. And now we just have to do a little bit of algebra. 1 minus the constant is 80 over 25. 80 and 25 are both divisible by 5, so let's reduce that fraction. Now it's in lowest terms. So I think what I'm going to do is just subtract 16 fifths from both sides and add c to both sides. 
And if I can count here, 16, that should be minus 11 fifths. Okay, so the solution that I'm after for my initial value problem is y is equal to 80 over 1 minus a minus. So I'm going to write plus 11 fifths e to the x. Okay, and that's how I plotted that function here. I'm not happy with my handwriting there. 11 fifths. Okay. So that's a little bit of an introduction to direction fields. I'll post the links to those softwares. GeoGebra is the one I would recommend trying to use because you can plot solutions as well, or Desmos. I'll put them in the video link. And uh, thanks for listening.